since I'm not going to be able to see him. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It is Carol C.C. Miller here, your positivity trainer, peace activator, and global hugger, coming to you today with This Is Life, Beautiful and Messy. And I'm curious as to how many of you are dealing with some relationship challenges right now, or any challenges for that matter. It's so easy for us to remain positive and happy and cheerful when things are going our way and we're getting what we want in life. But how do we keep that focus on what we want and what we love when we're going through a challenge? So I'm really excited to introduce to you today to my guest because she's been there, she's done that, and she's helping people through it. My guest today is Lee Daniel. She is a divorce attorney by trade. And we're going to talk about a little bit about her background, what led her to be a divorce attorney and now what she's doing as well because she's inspiring a lot of people to live their best lives through her work of not only as a divorce attorney but as a project that she has started that we're going to talk about too so if you are in need of a hug as you know i'm a big hugger so post where you're joining us from in comments <laughs> words I will come and give a virtual hug if you have any questions for Lee or myself post those too and we will try to include them in the conversation but if not we'll go back after the the program is over and um, talk about it as well so welcome Lee thanks for joining me today thank you and I just like to start by saying that I would like a hug okay <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I, I'm trying to think of when I first met you. I believe it was a very brief meeting at a Mike Dooley event in 2014. I It was in Chicago. So as I mentioned before, I left a lot to go do work during break. So I wasn't really part of the, the group as much. But since then, I've um, become part of a program that you're doing that we'll discuss. And I've spoken at one of your conferences. Yeah, but at least share a little bit with the audience, um, a little bit about your background and got what got you to where you are today? Okay, so I've been a practicing divorce lawyer for about 23 years now. And being in the divorce industry, you can imagine that it's not positive every day. In fact, I was thinking when you did the introduction, I'm sitting here in my office and all the people out there are dealing with clients and I'm here in here um, with this positivity <laughs> uplifter, you know. So so anyway, it, it's, it's not a really... Um, uplifting time in people's lives generally. And so that had really begun to affect me because if if you're listening and maybe you know this and maybe you don't, but energy really affects you and, and just being involved every day and listening to the sadness and the hurt and the anger and the hostility was really, it was becoming part of who I was. And so when I found Mike Dooley and Infinite Possibilities, I suddenly found a way to to change that for myself. And after I changed it for myself, then I wanted to share it with the world, which is what I've been doing. Yeah. So um, as far as the, I think it's fascinating because as you mentioned with the divorce um, background and things, it would be very hard to stay positive with that. So can you tell a difference on how you dealt with clients pre you knowing the power of your thoughts and how you deal with them now? Uh, absolutely, because before people would come in and, it, and I don't blame them. They want to come in. They want to talk a lot about how bad their partner is. Right. And so you come in and you want to tell me how terrible your partner is. And I used to really get into it. Right. So I would get right in there with them. And, and, and because I, I am an empath and I, I would feel what they were feeling and I would get really upset and angry with them. And after I learned that that, that was creating the kind of life I was having and that all of that focus that I was doing on their anger and their pain and their hurt was just part of who I was. Yeah. Then I knew I had to change that. So I started telling people that I didn't want to talk about that anymore. I wanted to hear their story. I needed the facts, but then I wanted to talk about what we could do to make things better, how we were going to, how I was going to help them rather than talk about all the bad things that have been going on the last 10 years of their life. And so we started focusing on the future and what we could do that was a positive thing. And it, and it really changed the way my practice looks totally. I, I think that's a good thing. And as far as even outside of the divorce arena, it's when you talk about something, just like Lee said, you still want the facts. It's factual that like today is 92 degrees in Chicago. I could say I can't believe how disgustingly hot and horrible it is and 
and everything. And then that's putting the emotion into it in this part of the story that isn't necessary and creates more of what I don't want because I'm focusing on how hot and humid it is and that my hair is not going to be this straight as soon as I walk out the door in a few moments. So um, I did you have some pushback or were your clients able to feel that and hear that? Because I again, anytime I'm on um, these conversations, I remind people being positive does not mean bad things or scary or hurtful things don't happen to you. Right. I, I can't control how life is, but I can control my reaction to it and sometimes you have to feel that victimhood or that anger and whatever and move forward through it so um, well, yeah Carol I remember um, I remember it's been it's been at least two years ago but I remember one seminal week where everybody that came in um, left without hiring me and I started thinking what is happening because it used to be that everybody would hire me and then I realized that the way I was practicing law, the people that were showing up at that point still weren't in the place where they wanted to focus on um, something better for themselves. Because I would try to tell them, this is not going to really get, you can hire me, but it's not really going to accomplish what you need, right? It's, it's going to, you know, it's still going to be there, right? And we can spend thousands of dollars fighting over this but you're not going to be in a better situation than you are now. They don't want to hear that, right? They wanted to find somebody who was, um, who was also going to play into that. Oh, you know, you should go after him. You should get him. And then if people were really focused on calling their, ex, their soon to be ex spouse names and I wouldn't play, I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, you know, I would be like, they shouldn't have done that, but what can we do now? Right. And so I realized that I was going to have to really work to attract people who wanted to look for the future, who wanted to look at solutions rather than the problem. And that's what I've done over the last year and a half. You know, I'm, I think that my staff was genuinely concerned that we were going to go broke and nobody was going to hire me. But that hasn't happened. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> people do want and they come out on the other side so much better off and not still filled with this anger and hate. Right. Right. That's what I want when I represent somebody. Well, and I think that's a great idea, too, as far as knowing what you want out of it, because you can certainly fill up um, every case you want and make a lot of money with those people who want to, you know, fight in that anger space. Uh, I, I think just like for me with coaching, I learned a big thing with the Abraham Hicks. Um, Oh gosh, I can't even think of the term right now. The emotional guidance scale. Like mm -hmm. I used to be that person 10 years ago when somebody would be like, life is horrible. Like life is good. Just be happy. But if you're in depression, you can't feel happiness. So you need to work your way up. And, sure. I'm, and I'm curious if some of those clients who did not hire you in the past, if they come to you when they're, they're they just weren't ready for being out of that victim mode of fight. So, well, and I think people get in their reaction phase and I did a blog post on this because there's a lady that came in and she said, I don't want to fight. I want to be, you know, I want to take the high road, blah, blah, blah. Well, we got a letter from the opposing lawyer side and suddenly she wanted me to go after him. And she said, she sent me an email and said, you're not being mean enough. And I thought I'm not being mean enough. I've been so mean my entire career. And you're accusing me of not being mean enough. <laughs> and also, what about you taking the high road for God? You know, and so people will, um, and Beverly's writing us notes. I don't know if we should answer her now or not. But I told her that, you know, I don't, that wasn't going to get her any farther. It was going to spend a lot of money. And I didn't think that was the right tactic, but she ended up saying, you know, you're not, there's really wasn't even anything to argue about. It was like a marriage. It was less than five months old. But People just get into reaction mode and sometimes they forget who they are. So even if you start wanting to be positive, sometimes you look at the behavior of other people and you and you change and you go that way. Well, and I think that's a great point, too, because it really all falls down to awareness. And the more you practice it, because anytime I post anything about kindness on positive focus and I get a bunch of comments, I'm always kind. I'm, I'm like, you are because I'm not always kind and I focus on being kind. So. I, I think that sometimes when we say go high, we don't even really think about what that means. Like I see a lot of people who talk about go high and then they're saying bad things about the person that they're, that they're saying is going low. And like, but you're staying with them in the go low part. 
Um, Beverly is commenting about that she's in a situation with a friend, an ugly situation, and she gets sucked into it and that she's an empath too. So um, Beverly, and I'll have Lee answer it too, but for me, it's, it's easy to blame the other people for getting sucked in, but at the end of the day, it's still our responsibility to mind our own energy and vibration. So maybe you would, um, it'd be good for you to come up with some tips on how to protect your own energy rather than getting sucked in. Because it is easy to get sucked into other people's drama. Lee, do you have any suggestions for her? Well, what I what I had to do is really try to stay out of, and it's not always possible, but try not to put myself in situations where I knew there was going to be a lot of negativity or gossip or uh, people were going to be complaining a lot. And and so I so I basically ended up in a situation where I didn't have as many friends because I had to be a different person and I had to realize that sitting around and complaining all the time was not what I wanted to do, right? right. I'd rather talk about a book or a movie or my dogs or art or something uplifting and something fun than to gossip about somebody else or to complain about all the things I possibly could complain about, right? It's not going to change it. Right. To complain about it. So just lessening the time that you spend with those people. I and mean, that's what I had to do. And, and if you, once you get into a different place, you're going to attract people that are in that same space you're in. You, you're not going to be alone for long. And you know, and, and sometimes you just have to have hard conversations. Like with, with my mother, who I dearly love, I said, can we just stop talking about all the bad, you know, I'd get to her house and it would be a litany of this person, this person, this person. And I said, let's just not talk about anything, any other, you know, negativity. And, and she said, well, what about that um, plane that just crashed? And I said, I guess you weren't listening. <laughs> she said, well, that's not negative. That's just the news. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe just talk to people. Yeah, and I think it's a good point because sometimes, again, it's back to awareness. They don't even realize that they're focusing on what's not right in their life or what's not right in the world. And there's certainly a lot of things that are going on in everybody's individual life and in the world that um, seems unfair and unjust and, and bad. But when you give that energy, you're just creating more of it. I think it's important not to bury your head and ignore that it goes on, but to bring love and light to it. So just like what Lee was saying, Beverly, um, Wayne Dyer was one of my favorite um, speakers and mentors. And he used to say, even with his kids, if they were fighting and stuff, he would leave the room to protect his own energy. But if he was in a space that he could be in that room and not allow it to affect him, then he would stay. So he was really um, very careful on self-care. And then The Course in Miracles, which I don't know that well, but I do love this one quote I've heard from it, is you're in the room to heal the room. Mm, so if sure. you stay in that space with your toxic friends and not absorb it, and in the room to heal the room for me doesn't mean me telling her, you know, you got to be positive and happy. It may be just me listening and being um, witness for that person long as I don't take it on, but it, it takes a lot of practice before you don't take it on. So if you're an empath at all, I would definitely encourage you to, to practice ways to, to support yourself on that. Yeah. So, so Lee, you. you have a program called um, Divorce Your Thoughts. Is that what it's called? Um, actually, no, I have Divorcing Your Bad Habits. That, okay. That's it. I have divorcing your bad habits and I have putting your thoughts on trial. Okay. And putting your thoughts on trial. Um, that's good, Beverly. Uh, yeah. Putting your thoughts on trial is where I just basically ask people to challenge the way they're thinking about things. And I put um, my trial lawyer advocacy at work. And so I, I ask people to, um, what witnesses do they have? Do they have hostile witnesses? You know, what is it that they want, which would be um, their opening statement? I mean, I, I basically put it into the trial context and have people go through a process. And I've done that at a couple of different workshops or probably on three or four different workshops. And it's a lot of fun. I think it gets so important because it's so easy for us to believe what our thoughts are without even questioning them. Like, is it truly like a bad day right now? You might be having a bad moment but we labeled it a bad day because we stubbed our toe in the morning or whatever. It's like, that does not constitute a bad day, but you really need to think about what you're, what you're saying and what you're thinking and what you're acting upon. Absolutely. 
So once you got into knowing the power of your thoughts, then you wanted to share it with more people, and that's how I got to know you. So um, here you started this um, program called Project Positive Change. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so um, about two and a half years ago, I started Project Positive Change because I knew so many people like you and me, Carol, and, and other people that are either IP trainers or they're just people that want to be healers or are healers, want to reach more people in the world. And I felt like that if we joined forces, we could do it together. And so I began a community and now we have around 162 members from around 26 countries. And so it's really incredible the, the feeling of community that we've created and, and what we're doing in the world. So I would want everybody to take a look at projectpositivechange.com and you can find the people that are members and see what they're doing in the world and send them an email, whether it's you wanna be more happy or maybe you need help with relationships or whatever it is, can find a solution there and yeah. I really love doing that work yeah and then you have a Facebook page too, project positive change and I'll go in after this and comments and post links to both of those things so some I always like to give the listeners some tips because the whole point of the show is heighten celebrations and lessen sorrows um, with the work that you do with just as the attorney do you have any not I don't want you to give legal advice that's what I'm misleading that. Um, what were some suggestions that you would have for anybody who was going through a challenging time, especially in relationship? But it could be anything, because really um, how we change our thoughts can affect every aspect of our life. Well, and I know that people talk about this a lot, but it absolutely works. And that's just to find something they can be grateful for. Because people come in to me and they may say, well, I'm going to lose half of my assets. And I say, well, but look at all the assets you have. I mean, because some people don't have any assets. I mean, wherever you are, whatever your situation is, there's probably some, you're, you're in a better place than a lot of people. And, and so I just tell people, um, try to look at what you have to be grateful for. If they say, I'm not gonna get to see my kids as much, I say, but think about the quality time and the focus that you can put on spending time with your kids now. So really it's just constantly reframing whatever it is that they are finding fault with and finding a way that they can appreciate instead. That's the biggest difference that I see can make in your life. If you just, if you look at it from all the ways that it's wrong, then you're going to be pretty upset all the time. But if you look at all the ways that you can make it a positive, then, you know, it can really start a new fresh life for you, which is what I try to tell my clients. Well, and I think either one of us could focus on the things that aren't quote unquote right in our lives or things that we huh. don't want in our lives and go into that complaining zone. So uh, I say it all the time, just because I'm positive does not mean I don't have my own challenges, but I do focus on what I want rather than what I don't want. And appreciation, if you're in a really challenging time, maybe you're appreciating that you have a bed to sleep in. Maybe you're I remember um, my mom um, has health issues and has to take oxygen. Like I appreciate that I breathe on my own. So there's so many things that we take for granted, even when it, in our biggest struggle, that we aren't appreciating. When I'm doing a coaching session, Lee, that's the first thing I do is ask them three things they appreciate today. And then we go into whatever um, the conference is going to be about. But appreciation is easy. Um, it takes practice, just like most things do, to be incorporated in life, but it's definitely um, my go to tomorrow. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing is that just think about the people that support you and reach out and ask for help. If, you, if you're struggling, um, then a lot of times people don't want to share. They don't want to be... Uh, a burden. They don't want to help. They don't want to, you know, and I, I think that reaching out to people that would support you and would be there for you if you're going through a difficult time, because I, I, I believe that we all do want to help. We, you know, it's part of who we are to want to serve and to want to be there for other people. And you, if you don't share and don't give that person a chance to, to give you a smile, give you a hug, you know, tell you how awesome you are, then, then they're missing out too. So I think that that's really important and not to just internalize it. Because I think that people that, especially when you suffer, I've suffered from depression in the past and it's like you don't want anybody to know how unhappy you are inside. But if you just would let just a little piece 
of joy in, then you could change everything. Yeah, and I, I think people want to go from into joy in one step, and that's where you get hung up. But it it is possible, and with practice and continuing to look for that um, better feeling place. I just, uh, even with you were talking about um, the assets of people losing their assets, it's so interesting to me when you hear people talk about divorce, they'll say, yeah, well, the divorce rate's 50%. I'm like, guess what? That means 50% of marriages work but or are together. I don't know that they work, but they're together. And But we always focus on the negative aspect of that rather than saying the 50% are still together. So um, we have somebody here visual and he has some conflict with his parents he's struggling to maintain a relationship with them and he often cancels visits to home because he's not sure um, how to do that do you have any recommendations on I didn't re I couldn't really hear you that well what was the I'm sorry what was the question or can I read it somehow yeah you can read it it's um, visual he says hi I'm a working where, where is it? <laughs> it, it should be the very top comment I don't see any comments. Oh, you're seeing Beverly earlier. Yeah, but Beverly was was up on the screen. Oh, okay. Well, here. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm a working single away from home because of past conflict I've had with my parents. Struggle. Okay. All right, Vision. So you can take that down. So Vision, I have exactly the same problem, and I would just try to have a conversation with my mom and just, and I just tell her that, you know, I want to talk about maybe have a list of things that you want to share with them that are good and try to get the conversation on the right note from the very beginning. And instead of not saying anything or not visiting, just think of some things that you can bring into the conversation. And if it's too difficult, then maybe you have to share with them. I don't know how receptive they would be, but I had to finally tell my mother that, I, I couldn't be in the space of talking about all these things all the time, but it was really stressing me out and making me unhappy. And I said, we have to talk about something, you know, that's good. And I just think that people, they just get into a habit. And yeah. so maybe if you just do a pattern interrupt and, and I'm, you know, I don't know, obviously your family, but if you just try to twist it a little bit and see what, instead of just saying, okay, this is what's going to happen. Take a chance that it might be something more positive but I understand exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, and I think I would add to that, can you hear the echo or is it just on my end? Um, I, I would add to that as far as the, the parents are switching it, maybe even asking, because when people are complaining, I, I think that like Lee said, it's a lot of times it's just habitual, but to say, so what can we do about this? Like, I mean, there's some hard conversations that really should be taking place in the world, and we can discuss hard conversations with the idea of positive solutions. But if you're just uh, to complain, um, then you're you're staying in that space. But one suggestion that I would have, Visual, is before you go visit your parents, just send them a bunch of love. One of the my favorite sayings anymore is that went better than expected. Oh, that's so good. Even if um, your visit wasn't great and it's a little bit better than the last time, it went better than expected expected and it could be even really good so it doesn't make you feel like you ha it has to be a, a perfect thing and then you, you just got to love your parents for who they are and it's going to be your choice on how much time you spend with them and how little time you spend with them but the more you can send them love um, that's actually going to change them far more than you telling them that they need to change and if you're still having a struggle because like Lee said you know we can't change other people Maybe after the visit with them, you plan to do something nice for yourself. So you're you're going to see them. You're a little struggled about it, but you know you've got you're going to a movie with friends afterwards. You're going to dinner afterwards. You're treating yourself to a massage or something, but that you know that after that visit, you're going to be doing something to support yourself. And find a way, just like I was saying before, and it just occurred to me, but find a way to be grateful that you've done it, you know, and to give yourself praise and to say, I don't really, instead of saying, I really don't like being there with my parents say, you know, I'm so glad I got to spend the time with the parents that love me so much. You know, and just turn it around and reframe it because we can do that too. You know, I mean, every situation has a good or bad. We just have to choose it. 
Yeah, and I think that's important too because even if they're challenging or difficult, like your mom might be to you, they, they I shouldn't say every parent because some parents are coming from such a deep hurt, they don't know how to love. But for the vast majority of people, your parents really do love you. They don't know how to show it in the way that you need it shown, but they do love you. So if you can even kind of see them as a five-year-old and you know what created them to be the person that they are. But I really do like the idea of being able to still have those conversations, but to turn them from a complaint into a solution. And I, even that sometimes for me, if I get into a complaining mode, it's like, so what do I, what do I want here? Well, I want to fix whatever I'm complaining about. So then I come into thinking about how to fix it. And sometimes I can't fix it. You know, there's lots of things in the world I can't fix, but I can send love to regardless. So um, it, it reminds me to return to uh, being in love myself into a happier, more peaceful space because you know, there's 7 billion people on this planet. And if each of us took responsibility for for what we bring to the world, um, and the, most people are doing that. Most people are leading normal, happy lives. There's just a, a tiny fraction of people that are causing the, the challenges. So outside of appreciation, what kind of things would you encourage people to do? Um, for... Uh, appreciation and reframing, like I talked about, and I think um, you, we were talking about, or somebody you were talking about, maybe self care. I think that self care is really important. And what I what I mean by that is taking some time for yourself to decide what you really want. If you're going through something that's pretty challenging, a lot of times we spend so much energy on the other person the situation that we don't really check in with ourselves to see what we need. And I really like journaling. So I do, I, I write a lot, I journal, I spend time by myself. I do things that nurture me and get yourself out of just thinking about what that other, what's happening with that other person or in this situation and really tap into what do I need right now? Maybe you just need a nap. Who doesn't love a nap? So maybe you just want a nap or maybe you just need to, pet your dog or to read a good book, but do some things that take care of you. That's, I think that's a great advice. Yeah, I, I like that advice. And I think, again, reframing and appreciation is going to change the situ situation anyway, but we probably all have a couple of toxic people in our lives that all the reframing we want to do isn't going to change because they're not ready to change. And that's sure. okay too, as long as you don't own that. But for me, what I what I do for myself and tell my clients is use that as your contrasting experience and see all the other relationships in your life that are fun and easy and healthy. So I, I'm a big believer if we didn't have contrast, we would start taking a lot of things for granted. So you sure. use that person as instead of blaming that person for bringing grief into your life and heartache and headache into your life, thank that person for being the example of what you don't want so you can focus on what you do want. And, and it, I guess that's part of reframing too. Yeah, and I don't, you know, not to be preachy at all because certainly I've, I've been there in the situation where, you know, I was just a heartbeat away from complaining about something and being absolutely miserable. Um, but, but when I changed, when I really changed and I found this happiness inside me that I consistently was creating, then the people around me changed too. And it's not even something that you notice all the time. But another thing that I would, if you feel like you're stuck and a lot of toxic people all around you, then I just think you should take a look at yourself and what's the energy that, that you're putting out into the world because those people, you're going to be attracted to that, right? So, and it's so hard to see in ourselves and so easy to see in somebody else. So I think that just taking a look at, you know, how are you responding? How are you showing up? You know, because that's what I had to do in the practice. So I was definitely showing up and people come in right now and go, I want you, you know, I'm hiring you because you're a shark or you're a bitch, you're a pit bull or all these different things. And I try to tell them I'm really nice, but <laughs> I've got a reputation over many years of, of not being very nice. And, um, you know, I do my job in the courtroom, but it had to change the way I internally related to people and to the cases. So I think that that's a really that's the first step. I think you have to take a look at you. I think that's a great one. And I think I like the fact that you mentioned being the shark because kind people can uh, aren't doormats. 
you know, right. being kind does not mean you're going to let people run all over you. I mean, kind people still have boundaries and can talk about the facts. Like in your cases, you're not all of a sudden making the husband or wife that you're against being these angels because they wouldn't be in court right now if that were the case. But you can do it from a factual place rather than a name calling place. And right. I struggle with that a lot when I first started. And so I have a spiritual counselor that I used to go to and, and she said, Lee, it's about your intent. It's really about your intent. So even if you're dealing with toxic people and you have a conversation, is your intent from blaming or judging or is your intent from a place of love? And so my intent, and I, sometimes I have to really get that and, you know, I have to really wrestle with it because yeah. Is, my, is this an attack? Am I in attack mode? Am I in blaming? Am I in judging? Or am I in a place of I'm doing my job, right? It's really where are you coming from, Where whatever you're doing. I, I th Yeah, intention so good because even I'm sure that you have cases where the other person has done things that you really don't like at all or kids are involved. And life has those experiences too where you know, the atrocity or the tragedy is so horrific. It's hard to stay in a kind place. But again, kindness is not accepting, saying what happened is okay. Right. It's just handling it from a kind place. Being nice can be, you can be bulldoze and things because you're just trying to please everybody. But kindness is not the same thing. So you can still be kind and have integrity of who I think that's one of the things that is important to me is who do you want to be in that room? Like, yeah. Who do you want to be with your parents? Do you want to to be um, a kind person or do you want to be the scared kid who's afraid of their parents? Because um, who doesn't want their parents approval? I mean, I, 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 I'm pretty confident in myself, but I still like to know that my mom approves of what I do. So I think the importance is to show up as the person you want to be, regardless of the situation around you. Yeah, I have a, a good story that reminded me of when you said, who do you want to be in the room? So I was in a trial. This has probably been about a year and a half ago. And you've probably heard this story because it's so amazing to me. So I'm in the trial and it's the second day or it's after lunch. I've just had a nice lunch with my client. I'm sitting there feeling pretty good. The case is just about property. It's not about custody or domestic violence or adultery. Really, it's just about two houses. That's it. Two houses. They both make a lot of money. So it's not even about not having money. And I'm just not in a bad mood, right? And so the. Oh, I lost you. Yeah, I don't know what happened there for a second, but I lost me too. We both um, left. I was like, Carol, you don't like the story? Where'd you go? <laughs> anyway, so so I'm I'm sitting there at the table, and the other lawyer says, "Objection, Your Honor." And I look up because I, I I don't even know what's happened. She's questioning her own witness, and I think, what on earth is she objecting to? And then she said. Miss Daniel is smiling. And I said, what? And she was objecting because I was smiling. And I'm, I know that's not in the rules of evidence. For sure it's not. And so, and, and the judge is like, what? And she said, Miss Daniel has been smiling the whole time. And I thought, what on earth? And um, so the judge made us go into chambers. And I thought, am I going to get in trouble because I'm smiling? And then she asked the lawyer, what is this about? And the other lawyer said, well, she's undermining my case because she's smiling at the court reporter. And I said, the court reporter's sitting across from me. Of course I'm smiling at her. But it's funny how she thought it was some way uh, denigrating her case or putting her down or disrespecting her when really it was just that I was in a good mood. And the court reporter looked at me, I smiled back at her, had nothing to do with her or her client or the case. And, and it really goes back to who do you want to be in the room? And, and, you know, I just wanted to be happy, <laughs> you know, I didn't. And that's what I told them. I said, I teach people how to be happy. And evidently it really works judge. And, you know, we went back into the room and I tried not to smile anymore, but it just was remarkable to me that I could be called out for smiling. I think that's a good point though, because a lot of times when we're upset with somebody else, we're assuming like Lee's smiling and she should. I, 
I don't know which end is if it's my wireless is not doing well today or what. I don't know. I don't know if it's the people, so it could be wrong. It, it's hard to say. It's technology, you know. That's why the show's called This Is Life. Things happen outside of our control. But I think that when we're upset with somebody, we have an assumption that may not, it could be the truth, but most likely it's not the truth. So having that conversation rather than blaming or judging somebody for what you think they're thinking. Oh, is, acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start saying that now when I see people. I object to your smile. I object, but you would object to them not smiling. Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going like, to object. Gonna you're object. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see where that gets me today. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, anything else as far as, so we've got appreciation, reframing, self-care. Yeah, I think journaling, which is part of self-care for me, I think journaling is super huge. Getting it out of your head, all whatever it is that you're thinking, get it out, <laughs> get it out on paper write it down, you know, just don't keep it up here going round and round in your head. You know, I think that just writing is really good for people. Yeah. It's amazing. Cause I'm a writer and I don't journal, but I really, know, I know. And it's such a powerful tool. And especially because just like you said, energetically, it is getting it out of your body by writing it down. So it really is a good, but for some reason I just, I'll do it for a few days and then I stop doing it for six months and then I'll do it for a few days and stop again. Uh, but it, it's definitely a very powerful tool. I'm going to have to pick yeah. it up again and, and make it a practice, I guess. And focusing on it, which is also, I said, part of self-care, but focusing on really what you want and trying to just imagine, you know, you in the middle and all these other things on the outside, right? But what do you want? Don't think about, don't, because sometimes people, especially in a divorce situation, I don't know how many people are here in the divorce situation um, or in a relationship situation, but you get caught up in what that other person is thinking, what the other person is doing, how they're going to react, and you just forget about you. So what is it that you really want? I mean, I see people arguing about things, and I'm like, you don't even care about that. You're getting just sucked into their their drama or their, you know, their conversation. When you've lost sight of what you want, so... I think that takes a little centering, especially if you're in a domestic situation, a divorce, because you're thinking about all the, the money, the, the trial process, you know, the stigma if you're in the South. Um, but just think about what it is that you really want. I don't think enough people do that. Yeah, especially like even you said, like you can think about that for work, you know, because everybody has their own agenda and hopefully in a work situation or a partnership of any sort, you're on the same agenda for moving forward. But it's so easy to to forget about what you want. And it's possible you don't even know what you want. I mean, the ultimate goal is joy and happiness. But each of us get there in a different way. So if you don't know, I mean, I've had a lot of people like, I don't know what my purpose is in life or what I want to do. So we go back to, you know, what makes you happy? So maybe just write down a list of 10 things, 15 things that make you happy. Listening to music is one of them for me. I almost always have music on. Um, sailing, which I'm going to do this afternoon, is a huge happiness factor for me. For me, it's animals. Yeah. She's got lots of animals, and they're very, very I've got six animals, yeah, six animals. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so to really look at things that make you happy and um, start – start there because it really life is about um, happiness and joy so it's not it should not be about suffering and I think sometimes we we suffer a lot more than we certainly need to with that said I really want to make sure that I um, get across that you know when you are in a divorce or you a loved one has died or a breakup of any relationship it's sad and there's going to be you know the whole moving forward and um getting through that situation. So, you know, yeah, I'm getting a divorce. I don't mean for everybody to jump up and down happy, but you don't have to suffer through it. Right. And just that's when taking some time just to process how you feel, you know, maybe um, people come in to see me. And like I mentioned, you know, I live in the South and I live in Huntsville, Alabama. And a lot of times people um, are ashamed because they're getting divorced. There's a lot of
okay, let's try this again. Okay, yeah. So we keep getting, so you, you know, you may be worried about like one lady told me, I can't get divorced because the people at my church are going to think badly about me or my mom is going to be mad. What are my kids going to think? And that's when it comes back to, you know, really processing how you feel and what you want and not listening to all those voices all around you that might be trying to dictate how you should feel, what you should do, you know, and, and just think about what is going to make you happy, what is going to find you peace and joy. And, and those people, they're responsible for their peace and joy. And I'm not saying you can't care about them, but you can't let them ruin, rule your life which is unfortunately, especially in domestic situation, there's so many people involved. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a point as far as, um, because I think people do sometimes think being happy is being selfish and that they need to think about how it affects other people. Well, certainly um, if you're happy, you're, if you truly look deep in your happiness does not harm anyone. No, it, it's, adding more love and laughter to the world and not there might be a smidgen of people that um, hurting others brings happiness but ultimately that's because they haven't uncovered their truth um if anybody wants to talk to read about I, on my i just thought about it on my website leedaniel.com i have um you can sign up for i have some things not to do to get stuck in i'm not saying it right at all but it's things <laughs> to do not to get stuck in your divorce you know it's like anger all it's a whole bunch of things i think it's eight um and so if you want to read about those things then you can find it there and then i've written a book called um the path to positive change and that's on amazon so it's really cheap and it's really small but people tell me they like it okay yeah we'll put i'll post the links for that okay. That brings up a, a great segue to it. So what's next for you, Lee? What's going on that we can share with the audience? Well, Project Positive Change is in a regrowth stage. So it's it's a place if you wanted to join for heart-centered entrepreneurs who really want a community. Somebody said today, this is a place for solo entrepreneurs to solopreneurs. I'm probably saying it wrong, whatever. It's a place for those people to find a community, support, resources, and also to have joint ventures and things like that. And we're really growing right now. So um, we've had tons of new people join from Europe and our next events, I think are gonna be in Amsterdam and in London in the winter and in the, no, in the spring and in the summer. And I'm working on a New England for the fall, but it looks like it might be a little tight. So just go to the Project Positive Change page and check us out and and sign up for you know notifications and things like that. Lots of great stuff is going on. Yeah, I, I'm part of it personally for my coaching as well as Positive Focus for their, their nonprofit site. And as well, even if you're not a solopreneur and doing your own healing thing, there's many people on that website to find resources to who might help maybe that's the coach you want to go to or that they have some type of healing service or, or something. So it's a, it's a great resource to be part of the community or to use the community to um, help with whatever you're going through your challenges. Cause that's the reason that Lee created it was to bring healers together to help heal people. So um, yeah. And we have tons of live streams over on our um, public Facebook page. Yeah. So we have lots of live streams going on from different people um, several times a week, all day, all times, because we have people from Asia, India, all over Europe. So you can check out and see put people talking, healing and uh, really cool stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff over there. So check that out. I'll put the links in when we get done with this. For me, I have started a book club and I just finished the first book, which is Into the Magic Shop by uh -huh. Dr. James Doty. It is so good. Even if you don't join the book club portion, I really encourage you to read it. Um, I, Visual, I believe, was the person who was talking about his parents. I think it would be a great read for you because it really, at the end of it, it goes back to compassion. So I uh -huh. love reading it and we're going to be discussing that online. I believe it's June 27th. And then if you're here in Chicago the next day, um, I'm having people over to discuss it. And then September, I'm going to Croatia with, it's our very first um, travels where we're embracing the world and going someplace new every year to do some type of service act while we are there. But mostly it's going to be 
well, even our service decks are fun, but mostly it's just going to be pure vacation in a beautiful, gorgeous country that I have been told I will not want to come home from. So the lives may be from Croatia starting September, not in Chicago. Well, I love Chicago, so I'll be back in Chicago. But thank you so much, Lee, for joining thank me and um, our couple of hiccups here and there along the way, just showing uh -huh. how how life goes on even when we don't expect those all things. And I will put links in on how you can get in touch with Lee and the work she's doing. And I'll I'll put your website in and the Project Positive Changes website. And all right. thank you for joining us. Hi, Barb. Barb is joining us from Norway. And I'll come in and give some virtual hugs and answer some questions if you have them. Everybody have a great day. I'll be back again next Tuesday. I'm not sure who my guest is yet. Maybe it'll just be me. But no, you matter. You matter to me. You matter to the world. And most importantly, you matter to you. So we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Lee. Bye, Carol. Have a great day. You too.